My name is Dave Evison, Director of Athletics at Methodist University, and I want to welcome all the new Monarchs to Methodist University, and welcome back our returners. We're excited to have you back on campus, and we're looking forward to an awesome 2020-2021 year. Today, Dee Dee Jarman and I are here to talk to you and walk you through the NCAA eligibility process. On normal years, we would meet with each team individually and walk you through this process one by one. But today's situation, that we're doing most of our information virtually, we're going to give you a highlight through this video and all of your information that you'll need to fill out is below on your MU portal under the Athletics tab. You will find different documentation related to different subjects that you will need to read thoroughly, very carefully, and have a thorough understanding before you sign off on all the paperwork. I'll first direct your attention to the student athlete statement. It's a packet of information that you'll read through with NCAA summaries of rules and regulations related to number of semester hours, academic integrity, transfer information if you're a transfer student, seasons of competition, and other NCAA rules and regulations. Please make sure you read that packet very carefully and if you have questions, we'll have our email address and our phone number available for you to call with any questions that you may have before you sign off. The first step in the process after you read through the summary statement is to start filling out the NCAA eligibility packet of information. Page one is going to ask you for a lot of information and I'm going to walk you through step by step some of the information that may be confusing to you as you go through the process. Your name and ID number should already be filled in for you and automatically populated, but it's going to ask you information related to are you a first time transfer to Methodist University? If you're a new student to Methodist, this is your first semester here, and you're transferring from another institution, a four or two year school, that answer is yes. For everybody else, that would be a no. If you transferred in the past, you're not a first time transfer, you're a returning student. The next bit of information that's going to ask you for is when you graduated from high school. That's the month and the year that you graduated from high school. The next information is going to ask you for your first date of enrollment at Methodist University. If you are a new student and you have never been to Methodist University before, that's going to be the fall of 2020 this year. If you're a returning student, you need to think back to when you first came to Methodist, put the fall or spring semester and the year that you got here. Summer does not count. The next question is going to talk about your initial date of enrollment at Methodist or at a secondary, post-secondary institution. The next piece of information is going to ask for your initial date of enrollment at any post-secondary collegiate institution. If Methodist is the only school you have ever been to, you've never been to a two-year school or a four-year school elsewhere, the answer is exactly the same as you put above with your enrollment at Methodist. If you have transferred to Methodist at some point in time, you need to think back to the first college, whether it's a two-year or four-year school, that you went to out of high school and put that fall or spring in the year that you went there. If you have any questions about that, please reach out to us. That's very important information. It's also going to ask you for the total number of semesters enrolled in college. So if you're a freshman and you've never been to college before, this is your first semester, please put one. For returning students, you need to go back and think all the full-time semesters you have been enrolled full-time. Part-time does not count. Full-time only. That's 12 hours or more since you've been in college. Please add this semester to your count. The next piece is going to ask you how many seasons of competition you have played previously in your sport. Now you have not triggered a year of competition in your sport yet because we have not started practice. So think back, if you're a freshman, it's very simple, it's zero. If you're a returner, think back to how many seasons you played in your sport and put that number. If you are a spring student athlete here at Methodist University, this past spring, the NCAA has provided a blanket waiver to waive your use of a season last semester. So for spring student athletes only, you do not count your season from last spring. They've waived that and you have the ability to recapture that season. The next piece of information they're going to ask you to sign off on is the student athlete statement. The student athlete statement is signing off on the packet of information that you read to make sure that you're going to act honestly with sportsmanship, that you're not going to get involved in gambling activities. The NCAA defines gambling as putting up something of value to win something of value. So an example we like to use with this is 
the NCAA Division Three March Madness or Division One March Madness. If you put money in to a pool to win money, is that illegal? Yes, because you put up something of value to win something of value. If you just enter a random contest through, say, the dining hall, and they're doing a contest to see who has the best bracket, but you didn't put up any money, you can do that. The other one is fantasy football. If you join a fantasy football league that you pay for to win something, that's illegal. You can't do that. So please refrain from any gambling, parlay cards, bookies. It's an NCAA violation, and it could affect your eligibility to be able to continue. The other piece of information that you need to be cognizant of in the packet that you read for this uh, statement is amateurism. Please make sure that you read the section that you've never taken pay for play, you've never signed a contract with a professional agent, that you've never done anything to jeopardize your amateur status for NCAA athletics. In addition, please read the section on recruiting and sports camps to make sure the recruiting process was done correctly. If you have any questions or any concerns as you read that packet, please reach out to us directly and we can answer any of your questions that you may have. The other piece that you read in that packet talks about financial aid. All your financial aid that you receive must come through the financial aid office and all loans and money that's paid for you to go to college must come from a parent or guardian or grants and scholarships from the institution. If you receive an outside scholarship to go to Methodist University, that information must go through our financial aid office to be vetted to make sure it's appropriate. The other thing it talks about in the packet is how many seasons and how many semesters do I have to participate in my sport? You get four seasons to play your sport. You get 10 semesters full time to do that. Your eligibility is exhausted whichever you get to first. So some folks take some years off from playing in their college career, maybe go to a community college, but they're still full time. That's why you have 10 semesters and four seasons to play. If you get the four seasons before you get the four semesters, your eligibility is over. If you get the 10 semesters before you get the four seasons, your eligibility is over. So it's important when you fill out this information that you think back to all of your full-time semesters that you're in any college and make sure you record this appropriately. What triggers a year of competition? That question comes up a good bit. You trigger a year of competition when you practice and or participate in a contest after the first contest. So for example, if your first contest is September 15th and you play in that first contest, you've used your belt's building. If your first contest is September 15th, but you don't play, but you practice the next day, you have used a season of participation. That counts as a year of eligibility. That's traditional season only. Non-traditional segments do not count against your years of eligibility. They just count against your semesters. If you have further questions about that as we go through the process, again, please reach out to us and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. The next document that you're going to fill out is the Buckley Amendment Consent. By signing off on the Buckley Amendment Consent, you're giving us access to your academic records, financial aid, all the information that we need to research to make sure you're eligible. We'll never share your information with anybody, but we do need access to it in order to determine your eligibility. As you go through the packet, you're going to see some information about positive drug tests. There'll be a several sections in there. One will ask you if you ever test positive in the future on an NCAA drug test that you're required to notify the athletic department. You should find out anyways, but you're required to notify us if you do. The other section that talks about drug testing will say two things. One, you've never tested positive on an NCAA drug test, so if that's the case, you would fill out that section. Section 2 says, I have tested positive. So if you've never tested positive, please do one. You're not doing both, so make sure that you have that filled out appropriately. The next section is the NCAA drug testing consent form. Please read through this thoroughly as the NCAA does random drug testing in sites of competition. They test for street drugs, performance enhancing drugs. There's a lot of really good resources. Number one is our athletic training department. They're a great resource for you to utilize. Uh, in any medical concern that you may have. But it's also very important that you know what you're putting in your body. If you're taking any supplements or things of that nature, please have a conversation with our athletic training staff, number one, to make sure what you're taking is appropriate and not harming your body, and two, that it is not part of the banned substance list. There's a link on the portal to all banned substances to the NCAA website. There's a lot of very useful information. 
But please know, if you do test positive on an NCAA drug test, that you could potentially have a 365-day ban in your sport. So if you do the testing at the end of the year, you would miss the entire next year potentially. So it's very important that you do that. Other things that we'll caution you about is make sure you're very cognizant of caffeine. Please do, caffeine is a stimulant uh, and it is listed on the banned substances. So please be very careful about caffeine. And again, our athletic training staff is a great resource. Please have an open and honest conversation with them to make sure that we're keeping you as healthy and safe as possible. The other thing our athletic training staff is going to do is they're going to ask you to fill out a very lengthy health form. Uh, for new students, you're going to have to have a physical. But part of that form is they're going to ask for all of your prescription drugs that you're taking and been, have been prescribed to take. Please keep taking those because the doctor has asked you to do that. But that's one reason we have you list those on the form so they can have a full knowledge of what they're working with in terms of your uh, you know, medications that you may be taking. So please sign off on the drug testing consent form. If you refuse to take a test, that is a positive. So it's very important that you fill this out and this is a requirement uh, from the NCAA in order for you to participate in NCAA athletics. I'm going to turn over the rest of the program uh, to Dee Dee Jarman. She is our Deputy Director of Athletics. She's also our Senior Woman Administrator and she's in charge of all of our compliance as our Compliance Director. She's also the advisor for our Student Athlete Advisory Committee. So for the returners and for the new folks, your coaches will talk to you very soon about the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. It's a great way to get involved to help us shape our decision making in the athletic department. Dee's a great person. She was our women's basketball coach for 20 years. She's the all-time winningest coach in the history of the program, and she's a great resource. And I look forward to having you get to know her with the new folks that are arriving at Methodist. So again, if we can do anything to help you through this process, please let us know, and we'll be happy to do that. But understand, you cannot step on the field until everything that I've discussed and what Dee is going to discuss is filled out and complete. That's the number one part of the process. So Dee Dee, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Jay. Dave took you through the first part of the NCA eligibility process. I'm going to finish up the second half. The first one that we are briefly going to discuss will be the student athlete authorization consent form for disclosure of health related injuries. By completing this form, you will be simply giving the athletic trainer's permission to submit information to the NCAA. From time to time, the NCAA conducts research on ACL injuries, concussions, sickle cell, just to name a few. At no given time will your name or Methodist University be mentioned in the research findings. Earlier, Dave explained to you that the NCAA administers drug testing at the NCAA championships. Methodist University Athletic Department will administer random drug testing throughout the academic year. We will do random drug testing for fall, winter, and spring student athletes. When completing this form on your MU portal, please make sure that you give us the proper information. We would like for you to give us your local address if you're a commuter student. If you are a resident student, please make sure that you supply us with your resident hall and your room number. For an example, Barber 305. This information is crucial in the notification process. Now let's discuss social networking websites and social media. We understand how important this is to our student athletes. We're not asking you to refrain from posting. All we are asking for you to do is when posting, be mindful of the content. We would surely hope that none of your content will come back and haunt you when you start job searching or from when you start looking to apply to law school, medical school, or continuing your education. Be very mindful of what you post. Methodist University does not take hazing lightly. On your MU portal, you will find a video about hazing. This video is sponsored by the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Please watch the video and after reviewing the video, please complete the form. The form will ask you to initial three, three places and sign and date at the bottom. Methodist University competes in the USA South Athletic Conference. The conference has conduct standards. They hope that every student athlete will always respect the opposing team, coaches, and officials. 
Always cheer loudly and proudly for your team. Also on your MU portal, you will find the Methodist University Student Athlete Handbook. We encourage you and request that you read over this a couple of times before you complete the sign-off form. You can, once again, you can find this form on the MU portal. Every year the NCA requires sexual violence training. Every student athlete, every coach, athletic support staff, and athletic administrator will participate in this training. This year, the athletic department has adopted the No More program. This program was created by our student affairs department. You will find this presentation on your portal. We ask that you review this and then after complete the form that you have done so. In the spring, we will attest to the NCAA that we have completed this type of training. Throughout this presentation, you've heard Dave and I mention the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. This is a platform where our student athletes can voice what matters. If you would like to be a part of SAC, please contact me. Your coach will be giving you additional information concerning SAC. Your voice matters. The Student Athlete Advisory Committee also sponsors mental health wellness watch cards. These cards will be provided to you by your coach. This information gives you resources that will be accessible to you on campus and in the surrounding area. This concludes our eligibility process and welcome to Methodist University Athletic Department. Throughout the process, if you should have any questions, feel free to reach out to Dave or myself. We look forward to watching you compete this year, and at any time that you have questions or concerns, please reach out to us. Once again, welcome to Monarch Nation.